Rob and crew go to Irene's apartment and witness her abduction. This is what, the sixth time across all continuities? They give chase but they crash into a fire hydrant, knocking it over, but they all get out of it unhurt and the only damage to the car is a broken headlight. Ryu meanwhile puts on a bandana as he arrives at Friedman's facility and fights his way through fishmen that look like rejected Power Rangers monsters. Back with Robert's group, seriously these guys are the focus of the story not Ryu. Sarah figures out that Irene was kidnapped to bait Ryu, even though as far as we know Sarah doesn't know that Ryu is a ninja or even someone worth baiting. Jeff pulls out a box of guns and is all for going to save Irene, he is a pussy no more. Jeff and Robert don't want Sarah to go. It's cause she's a girl you see. However the best they can come up with is that she can't run in a skirt which she easily counters by ripping a skirt. So they tie her up. I just wonder if they knocked her out first or if one just held her kicking and screaming while the other went and got the rope. The two blow up the gate and ride into the building on a motorbike only to discover that they've arrived at the New York Furry Convention and start exterminating legions of the vermin along the way. Jeff reveals that he used to be a mercenary but wanted to get away from it so he pretended to be a pussy. Well that explains why he's voiced by Daisuke Gori who only voiced the most hardcore of characters. Ryu meanwhile is crawling through a vent when the girl from earlier telepathically calls for help again. He drops down and finds the rest area for the convention goers. Ryu scares one of them away and we see that the monitor connected to the security camera reads secret room. Yeah, I'll bet it is. So Ryu blows the room up, killing all the people inside, and Friedman goes sick. He kidnapped Ryu's wife, specifically to lure him to this building, and then got pissed off when he started wrecking shit. Between this and the press conference, just how fucking stupid is this guy? He said it's okay though since he can just make more. Why did he get so pissed off then? Robert and Jeff keep killing randomers until one gets close enough and injures Jeff's leg. The Furry Fury is no match for the power of Daisuke Gori however and Jeff blows his brains out. He tells Robert to go on ahead and makes a final stand and it seems somewhat similar to Robert staying behind in Ninja Gaiden 2. The ensuing explosion makes Robert drop his gun down a stairwell so he goes on with his handgun. Ryu drops in through the skylight and it turns out he had no idea Irene was even here. So Friedman's plan was to kidnap Irene to lure Ryu here but didn't leave any way for Ryu to figure out that Irene had been kidnapped by him and would be in this specific building. How the hell did he expect Ryu to show up here then? He just arrived here by complete chance. Friedman exposits that he created an orb based on a surge of the Dark God's power that he recorded when Ryu fought Jackio. Or some shit like that, it really isn't explained well, but it could just be the subtitles. I mean, they do spell Lou and Jackie are wrong. Robert shows up in time to see Friedman get knifed in the back by Bucky Wise. So it turns out Bucky Wise is behind it all, and they get the slight feeling that we just may be rehashing the plot of Ninja Gaiden 3. The difference here is that he also kidnapped Friedman's daughter to force him to help. A minion arrives with said daughter, Catherine so she can see her father get stabbed with a sword but she doesn't react at all no scream, no, no, nothing Bucky Weiss is a part of the evil god's body that he can use with the orb to break the seal but he doesn't care about that, just Irene I know it's supposed to sound really romantic that he's willing to discard the rest of the world to save his wife but he's willing to discard the rest of the world to save his wife making him sound like a complete fucking idiot if the world is fucked, so are they. Bucky Wise's reaction goes thusly. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Whatever. He transforms with sounds taken right out of Dragon Ball. and he and Ryu fight through the ceiling to the roof with Robert and Irene following behind. Ryu gets done in and stabbed. That's an odd reaction to seeing your best friend getting stabbed. 
Irene runs in with Ryu's discarded sword, but is, of course, completely useless. It's because she's a girl, you see. Robert diverts Bucky Wise's attention and gets backhanded for his troubles. Ryu picks up his sword and charges it up. But this is sadly before the reboot, so there is no brutal over the top super move. He just stands there until Bucky Wise tackles him off the roof before stabbing him in the back on the way down. Both land on a lower level, but Bucky Wise gets up to pick up his sword from the edge, and Ryu takes the chance to impale him as both go over the edge again. This time they fall through a skylight and Bucky Wise is impaled on a statue. Both stop moving and Irene cries over Ryu's death, despite having no proof that he's dead yet. Jeff's okay though. They make it down to where Ryu is and Irene cries over his body. Apparently the CIA doesn't teach its agents how to check for a pulse as Ryu wakes up shortly after. They leave the facility as Sarah shows up with Glasses Girl and hits Robert. His reaction? He asks her to marry him. This guy has the strangest reactions ever. The cat appears again for no reason and Catherine picks up the piece of the evil god. Ryu and Irene kiss as we go to credits. Wait, what? What about the piece of the evil god? You know, for an ending to the Nez story, this isn't much of an ending. All we really know about the future after this is that it leads into Dead or Alive. Or it did before the reboot. But what are my thoughts on this OVA as a whole? Well, it does give a nice explanation as to what happened after the Nest trilogy and the fact that Robert survived. The fight sequences are fairly simple, but they're definitely better than the ones in Tekken the motion picture. The only real downside is the way Irene being a girl was played up for all it's worth. The little girl was completely pointless, and things like the press conference scene and the whole plan of Bucky Wise and Friedman didn't make much sense. Although that could just be the subtitles. And sadly, Keiichi Namba's voice is not as cool as Hideyuki Hori's. All in all, it's not bad, and I'd recommend tracking it down if you're a Ninja Gaiden fan. As for non-fans, the lack of English dubbing and the poorly explained plot might put you off. Now for my next review, well, I don't want a repeat of what happened last time, so you'll just have to wait and see. なんてやろうだ。